What is going on you guys? My name is Josh. My beautiful wife Haley and I have a full-time YouTube and reselling business. This means we film ourselves going to places like thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales, wherever we can buy something super cheap and then we try to flip that item online for a profit. In today's video we're going to head to our local flea market. We've been here dozens if not hundreds of times looking for things that we could flip for a profit and today in particular was a very successful day. We've actually already sold a lot of the items that we picked up in this video. So stick around you might learn something. Look at this, Haley. Basketball hoop. For the warehouse. Which one on the basketball hoop? Five bucks. Five bucks. I'll give you five bucks for it. Okay. Since I gotta build a backboard. Yeah, build a backboard. There you go. That's the fun part though. That's right. I can call it a DIY project. Yeah. Well thank you, sir. Yep, thank you. Haley, can you carry this? <laughs> the first thing we buy is the heaviest thing. Does it look nice? Air mask, a little bit of wear down there. Oh, the orange ones? What are these? Uh, right here. Balance. This might be pretty good. Size 10. A little bit of yellowing, but we have that Salon Care 40 stuff. Yeah. How much are your shoes? Uh, for you, uh... <laughs> He's getting the calculator out. Uh, <laughs> 12 bucks. Yeah. yeah, I can do 12 on those. All right, we're at 12. See anything else we can add? What are those Nikes back there? Twos? Tods. Uh, they're bald, super bald. I think that's it. Yeah, I don't see anything else. Swirl. You got eight dollars on you? Ten? Alright. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. We'll stop. Stop. Yeah, we got it. Thank you, you too. So like I said in the video for those white and red Air Force Ones, we just found there's a product called Salon Care 40 that you can put on the soles of those if they're yellow and then I think you wrap it in like saran wrap or something, leave it in the sun and it kind of bleaches the material and gets it back to pure white. I'm not gonna go into full details about that. It is a chemical technically and it's kind of dangerous. But if you search YouTube for how to restore white soles of tennis shoes or how to remove yellowing of white soles of tennis shoes, maybe put Salon Care 40 in the search bar. You'll probably find 30 videos explaining the process, but that is a great product. We've used it personally, uh, not on a ton of shoes, like two or three shoes, and it has worked every single time. So we haven't listed those red and white uh, Air Force Ones yet, but we paid 10 bucks for them, and I'm pretty sure even if they don't come clean, even if the yellowing stays, we could probably at least get 40 to 50 bucks for them as is. If we do get them clean, probably like 60 to 70 Five, maybe somewhere around there. Older Jordans. Yellow ones. Is this yours? Yeah. Okay. All right. So look at that. these three games, and then the two Jordans. 30 for these. So 10 a piece on those? Uh -huh. Okay. And 100 on a piece for the whole set. 100 a piece. Do you know if they're real? Yeah. Okay. This is too much. Yeah, right. for me. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, it's a basketball goal. Basketball hoop. Everybody made fun of me for calling it a basketball goal. What about your hats? 20. 20? Yeah. Zonkies. They're cool. YouTube. YouTube, what's up? Huh? <laughs> Golden State Warriors. That'd be cool. These are five. Five? Yeah. Nine, 50. One size fits most. I could do five on that. So the new ones are 20. Yes. Used ones, five. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Got it right here. Thank you. Thank you. 
I love the situation of this guy selling those hats at the flea market because it's just a big pile of hats and I was like, how much are your hats? He said 20 bucks and I could have easily have walked away because 20 bucks is kind of a lot to pay for a hat if the goal is to flip it for a profit. There's not too many hats that are worth more than $20 at the flea market. But I saw the Golden State Warriors hat and I was like, what about this one? And he's like, five bucks? I, if I would assumed that that hat was $20, like he said for all the other ones, I would have missed out on that deal. So we paid $5 for that Golden State Warriors hat and it actually has already sold on eBay for $20 plus shipping. We do have some eBay fees and things like that, but we'll probably end up making like $13, $12 or $13 in profit and it sold in less than 48 hours. It was a super fast seller as well. How much are the shoes back there? 45. 45 each. How much the hat 45 each. With the box. With the box. The peeling right there, but. Hey, these are crazy. Screaming whatnot to me. I just don't know if they're real. Brooklyn. So that's 13. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? The box, one of the boxes is the original, the other one's not. Okay. I think these are right. It says orange flash, black, brown, white. 45. These are super cool. Okay. Nintendo DS Lite. Comes on. How much for this? That one with the two games. It comes with two games. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't see this and, one. And uh, the chargers for 50. You said 45 on these? Yes, sir. Could you do 80 for both? No. No? Okay. Oh. I think you should get those. Did you do 40 for those orange ones? I really want 45. You know, I saw four pairs, 80 a piece. Yeah. And those two, I was like, the last two I have. So. Yeah. I'll do, I'll do 45 on this. Here you go. Thank you. So we grabbed this pair of Jordan Spizikes. I think that's what they're called, the orange ones. Paid 45 bucks for those. And every time we show you guys that we bought a pair of Jordans at the flea market, we always get questions in the comments saying, how do you know if they're real? Because flea markets really do have that correlation with selling counterfeit goods. It does happen from time to time, but most of the shoes we come across are real, especially if they are lower end Jordans. Like these Jordans are worth like a hundred bucks. So the chances of somebody going through the trouble of counterfeiting them with a box and everything, that's a lot of work to counterfeit a hundred dollar pair of shoes. You know, you can also look at the overall quality of the material, like the leather pieces or the suede or whatever to feel if they are you know, if they feel high quality, you can also look at the stitching. You can look up the pair of shoes online by typing in the style code on Nike's. It'll be six digits on the tongue with a hyphen followed by three more digits. And you can look at a picture of an authentic pair and then kind of compare them and see if there's any vast differences. But all that being said, we just took a chance on these for 45 bucks and they did sell on eBay for I think 90, let me look. 95, $95 plus shipping on these. So 45 into 95 minus eBay fees leaves us with this amount of, of profit on this pair of shoes. There are also a couple of apps you can use on your smartphone to help authenticate some high-end luxury items. There's an app called Check Check, which we have used for the last several months. And we personally haven't had any problems with that, but I have heard from a lot of newer people that are signing up for that app that it's really glitchy and sometimes the pictures don't load. So you may not have luck with that, but there's another app called Legit Check, I think. And that one is a little bit more expensive than Check Check. Check Check's like $3 to authent authenticate one pair of sneakers. And then Legit Check works with, I think, sneakers and other luxury items like purses and stuff. So I might look into that. We haven't personally used that app yet, but I know several people that have and they all say it's it's great. So definitely look into those if you want a way to uh, help authenticate these items that you're finding out in the wild. Look at this, Haley. 
Let's look at your little coop, bird coop, chicken coop. I think Moe's could fit in there, Moe's coop. I don't think so, I think it'd be pretty in here. Let's go check out the shoe lady, see if we got any Jordans or Hoka's or on clouds. Hello. Any Hoka's today? On cloud? It's the, this, they're on clouds. They have like the O and the N on them. No? These Air Max are pretty cool. Joy Ride. These vans, look at those. Those are cool. Those are cool. What size are they? Um, men's nine. Women's ten and a half. They look kind of cool. How much for these? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Nice space on that. How much are these? Forty-five. Forty-five. These look like my size, maybe. No. Men's twelve. Flynet Max. Size 11. How much for these? Uh, 25. Okay. So 25. 25, that's 50. Plus 45, that's 95. Alright, see so it. 25, 25, and 45. So it's 95 altogether. Could you do 85 for all four? What? What? Yep. And this. It's okay? Okay. Cross it. Thank you. Thank you. We have literally spent thousands of dollars on shoes with this particular lady at the flea market over the last year or so, and I still call her Shoe Lady, which seems seems weird. I don't know if she wants her name in the video, but next time we see her this coming weekend, probably, I will definitely ask what her name is so I can address her properly. She gives us good deals, usually. She's kind of tough to negotiate with, but $85 for these three pair of shoes was a really good deal. We've actually already sold the Nike Vapor Max shoes for 90 bucks plus shipping. So after eBay fees and everything, I think we're like $6 or so away from our break-even point. I think it was like 79 bucks or so after eBay fees. Uh, so once we sell the uh, the Vans, which I think I have listed for 35 plus shipping, and the other Nike Vapor Max ones, I think those are listed for 45 or 49 or so. Uh, so that should that'll be all pure profit at that point, for pretty much. So pretty good deal. Kings. So big. How much for these? 35. And what about those uh, those gray ones, the Hoka's? Yeah. 25. 25 and 35? Okay. We got these Brooks Adrenaline 21's here too. Oh, and these Stefan Janowski's. <laughs> okay, these, these. These Stefan Janowski's. Yeah, those are cool. It's wholesale, basically. I forgot. How much for all four? Um, Thirty. Thirty. Sixty. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Uh, I'm thirty-five. Thirty. Thirty. Okay, so. Ninety and. 25. 90 and 25. Hmm. These work 30. 90 and, 90 and 25, so 115. Yeah, I'll do I'll do one for 115. 24, 8, 60, 80, uh, 120. I was gonna negotiate, but that's a good price. 115 for all these. Thank you. No, nah, she's she's got one. So the four pairs of shoes we just picked up from the second shoe lady at the flea market, whom I also don't know the name of, was a really good deal, $115. And anytime I say 
that's a good deal. Like $115 for four pairs of shoes. Some people are like, that's way too much. I can't believe you're paying that much for used shoes. How will you ever make a profit? You pay way too much. You suck as a reseller. Stop paying so much. But there is good news for you haters out there, and that is that we've already sold all four pairs of these shoes. So I'll put some comps on the screen here. The Stefan Janowski sold for $45 on eBay plus shipping. The Brooks sold for $59.99 plus shipping on eBay. The Merrill Boots sold for $55 plus shipping on eBay. And the Hoka running shoes sold over on Poshmark for $70. So after eBay fees and Poshmark fees, we are left with $195 in revenue. So if we take out the $115 that we spent on these four pairs of shoes, we are left with $80 in profit. So I don't know very many resellers that wouldn't be willing to spend $115 to make 80 in profit. That's a little bit less than doubling your money and all four pairs of shoes sold within 72 hours of listing. We back here. We and Kindle or something. Some DVDs, tens here. Oh my gosh, look, a razor. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> that is a throwback. I remember when my dad had one of those. T-Mobile. And I didn't have a cell phone. This was like, it was like the thing. This is the thing. Like when I was in like 10th, 11th, 12th yeah. grade, something like that, my mom surprised me with the one. Like she was like, we can't afford the razor. You're gonna have to get something yeah. else. I was like, oh, okay. And now phones are And then she surprised, yeah, she surprised me with this. This was the coolest phone. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Couple questions. Yes, sir. Coolest phone ever for collector's purposes only, since I okay. don't even know it works, but I'm interested in that. Right. Also, the Nintendo Wii over mm -hmm. here. What are you asking on that? This gentleman is looking at it. I want it 20 for the whole thing with the board and the game, all that stuff right there. He doesn't I'll want take the it. board. Yeah, I know it's a great deal. He doesn't want the board. I'll take all of it. Oh so my you, goodness. Look at there. Let's we'll start the bidding at $20. You, if you're going to get it for 20 that's fine. I would. 20 is too much for you? I don't want if you if you want it, you can. I, well, I was just, she, she I was just actually cheap. told me 15 if, without the board because I don't want the board. Yeah, I was. 15 okay. is good. If you want it, take it. If you don't yeah. want it, I'll, I'll take it. I'll leave it up to you since you, okay. you got here first. Yeah, I'll take a chance on it. You never know if they're working. Never know. What are you asking for those boots right there? Ones with the, the white fuzzies Her? in them? Yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. What is this? Uh, somebody, three bucks. Three bucks. I'll do three bucks let's on this. Let's do it. Bagging you up. Yeah. You got a big bag? I do, yeah. You want to just throw them in your big bag? That'd be good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you five for them. Those are, oh, those thanks are good. Oh, a lot. Yeah. Are they expensive? Um, I mean, Maybe. new, yeah. And this can, I mean, a little bit of heel drag, so they're, they're nice. Those winter boots, snow boots? Uh, yeah, winter. They're really popular up north where they actually get snow and stuff. Okay, cool. These are all bag full for five bucks the whole way down. Bag full for five oh, bucks. Yeah, a lot That's of awesome. good name brands, a lot of cool stuff. Take a look here. Since I gave you an extra two bucks, can I have this Razor phone? You can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nostalgia. You enjoy it. Haley, I got the Razor phone. Oh my god, it's like great. <laughs> great. <laughs> I just found this, Haley. It's a Nintendo Wii Points card. 2,000 Nintendo points still sealed in the package. Huh. I don't know if it's like worth anything, but like somebody that connects, that connects, collects. collects Nintendo stuff, this might actually be pretty cool. That last lady at the flea market had a ton of stuff. She actually had four different spots that she was taking up with all of her stuff, and each spot is like $35 or so at this flea market. So she was in the mood to sell some stuff. Her prices were really good. I think a lot of the better stuff she had was already sold. This was one of our last booths that we went through. It was on the opposite side of the market that we started on. So I really wish we would have got there sooner because she still had some good stuff and she was telling us off camera about some of the stuff that she had already sold that day. That Nintendo Wii bundle for 20 bucks, that was a crazy good deal. They didn't have any, any controllers with it or nunchucks, but they did have all the cords and the Wii Fit boards. So that was definitely profitable. We also got a, a set of Harry Potter books from her. It wasn't the complete set. It was three of them. I'm, I, I guess my GoPro died or something. I couldn't find the footage, but we got those three three Harry Potter hardcover books with the dust covers for like two bucks a piece. We got the Sorel boots for $3. Sorel boots do sell well, but they're seasonal. They're snow boots. So it is snowing in some parts of the world. You might still sell them in the summer, but for us, those typically sell well around like 
uh, September, October, November, somewhere around there. But three bucks for a pair of Sorrel boots, you can't, can't go wrong with that. I also got that sealed Nintendo points card thing. I was like, I don't know what this is. It's probably not active, but if somebody has a cool video game collection they want to add this to, why not? So we paid $3 for that. I think she charges three bucks for that and I actually sold it on Whatnot, our Whatnot Live auction last night. And I think it went for like $17 or so. It's not a ton of profit, but for an item like that that I literally had no idea what it was worth, took a chance, three bucks into 17, whatnot takes like 11% in fees. So not a bad profit on an item that I literally knew nothing about. So I remember picking up one more pair of shoes at the flea market today, but I could not find the footage anywhere. I guess my GoPro did die or stop recording when I wasn't realizing it, but I'll put them on the screen here. It's a pair of Brooks Merry Christmas running shoes. And Brooks, they're just Revell 3s or Revel 3s, however you want to say that. And I haven't had a ton of luck with those normal ones, but if you can find shoes like this that have a theme to them, like Christmas or winter, or sometimes Brooks makes running shoes for a specific race, like the Boston Marathon or the New York Marathon or something, those can often be really really good and valuable even in used condition these were in almost like new condition very gently used and i think we paid 20 or either 20 or 25 dollars i don't remember offhand but either way they sold for 50 dollars plus shipping on ebay and again they sold within 72 hours of listing so be on the lookout for themed brooks running shoes for us they've always done really really well I do want to say here that I think it's probably inevitable that somebody will comment on today's video and say something like, oh great, another Harry Tornado flea market video where all he buys is used shoes. This is so boring. I wish you would buy other things. And I totally get it. If you guys aren't into shoes, if that's not a category of item that excites you and gets your blood pumping, then this is probably not a very interesting video for you. So thank you for watching this far. But I will say that I'm trying to learn other categories of items. So I've only been re reselling for three years, so I certainly don't know everything. I take chances on things from time to time. We bought a mystery to a toy box of stuff at Goodwill. We bought uh, a bunch of action figures coming up in a, in a future flea market video. That should be pretty good. But shoes, golf clubs, and hats, those boring items like that that we buy consistently are the items that make us the most money. Like, yeah, today's video, we didn't find any crazy cool items, but we're I'm pretty sure we're already in the profit from everything that we that we sold or at least broke even. And then we still have all these other items that will sell and put us well into the profit. So you have to work with what's available in your area and you have to work with what you currently know, like your current knowledge of items. You should also keep growing and keep learning new categories, but you don't wanna abandon your roots in pursuit of that new stuff. So that's, that's the balance that I'm trying to find. So hopefully that clears the air a bit. If you guys have learned anything from today's video, or if you've enjoyed it at all, definitely let us know by hitting that like button down below. It's totally free. It really helps us out a ton. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. The ultimate goal here is to pass the Home Depot and the YouTube subscribers. I will put our current number of subscribers here and Home Depot's current number of subscribers here. And within the next 12 months, I would like I would like I would like to pass them. I would like to pass them. So help us out. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, you're the best, and we will catch you on the next one.